Now, 2022 in many ways was the year of the GMT, with a broad array of impressive releases, including the Tudor Black Bay Pro, the Longines Zulu Time, the SBG 285, and the Rolex GMT Master II Lefty. However, you could make an argument that of all the new GMT releases, it was the launch of the new Seiko 5 GMT collection that served as the greatest shakeup to the industry as a whole, standing completely alone as a mechanical GMT watch priced below $500. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at this game-changing Seiko 5 SSK collection. Let's jump in. So before we jump into this video, if you do want more details on that whole concept of GMT watches, I recommend an article down below looking at some of our top picks for 2023. We have close to 30 watches in that list, wide range of prices, uh, looking at things like this Seiko 5 GMT, all the way up to some crazier things in the higher price brackets if you wanna go up there, but also a lot of stuff in between as well. It's a great jumping off point for your research. In addition to that, we are an authorized dealer of Seiko. So if you like what you're seeing here today with this watch, of course, check them out online. We'd love to have your business. And then in addition to that, check out the other wide array of curated pieces on our Seiko collection. All of that is handpicked by myself. I went through and tried to pick the best of the best from Seiko. Uh, so definitely get lost and have some fun in there. When the modern Seiko 5 sports collection was provided with an updated facelift in 2019, some were bitter when looking at the collection given the recent discontinuation of the Seiko SKX, wanting an immediate successor in the process. On the surface, they appeared to be that, as they were almost a one-to-one -one case of the ISO 6425 rated SKX diver that was retired that same year. But after some time on the market and several variations within the collection, public opinion started to shift regarding this lineup, as they were never intended to replace the SKX, but instead be a definitive driver of value in their segment with sports looks and specs to match with 100 meters of water resistance and the 4R series of movements on the inside. For many, there was no further evidence needed at that point to showcase that this collection had some great watches for the money. Yet Seiko decided to still offer it with the release of three new GMT watches underneath the Seiko 5 Sports Collection in the summer of 2022. The trio included the new black SSK001, the blue SSK003, and the orange SSK005, all containing the new GMT caliber, the 4R34. This release came as a surprise to virtually everyone, myself included, but enthusiasts were quick to grasp the potential massive move being presented by the new collection, with the level of hype only growing as collectors got the watches in hand. Diving into our overview of these watches, we'll start with the area of the greatest novelty presented by the Seiko 5 GMT collection, the new 4R34 caliber, in view beneath the safety of a mineral exhibition case back on the flip side of the cases. For most collectors, I don't think it needs to be stated that mechanical GMT watches under $500 are not something that you often see unless it's from a no-name brand or is a failed design that was destined for the bargain bin. In other words, this is a huge development for not only Seiko, but the entire industry. The 4R34 oscillates at three hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour while offering a humble power reserve of 41 hours. The visible caliber doesn't offer much in the way of finish, which is perfectly fine as what can you really expect for less than $500. However, the big move is the ability to track an additional time zone with the caliber offering a collar or office GMT functionality with its trademark independently adjustable 24 hour hand. To set it up, you'd pull the crown to its second position and rotate it counterclockwise to set the date before pulling the crown to the farthest position and advancing the hands to demonstrate the correct time and date. You'd then push the crown back to the second position and rotate it clockwise to set the unidirectional 24 hour hand to display your desired secondary time zone in coordination with the markings on the chapter ring or bezel. And while this caliber is nothing necessarily sexy, its mere existence changes the game for the attainable watch world, bringing a typically higher price complication to a new market position while also having huge third-party implications for Seiko instruments with their NH34 version of this caliber for micro brands, for example. Speaking anecdotally to timekeeping presented by these three examples for the 001, minus one to plus one seconds a day, don't expect that, just saying anecdotally, the 003, plus four to plus nine seconds a day, and the 005, plus two to plus 10 seconds a day. All of these are great considering the minus 35 to plus 45 second a day for its standard, so just have realistic 
expectations here. Don't be that guy looking for plus one, minus one types of ranges of deviation. Just know what you're getting quoted out of the box and hopefully be pleasantly surprised. Like the case, the dial format of the new SSK is inspired by the SKX, but a few subtle hits of additional refinement make a huge difference in differentiating this design from the standard Seiko 5s. Despite some differences in the primary dial surface with the black SSK001 offering a matte black effect compared to the Sunray blue or orange on the 005, the general format is more or less the same across the board. Geometric indices following the SKX design offer polished perimeters that match the material of the handset at the center. Also tucked into the hand stack is a 24 hour hand, color coordinated to match each of these three dial variants. The chapter ring offers a minute track as well as a 24 hour printing at the five minute positions. Ideal for anyone looking to use this watch to its full three time zone potential with the help of that rotating bezel. At three, a straightforward date window offers additional traveling utility and an easy view thanks to a polarizing Cyclops magnifier positioned just above. Dialtex is paired back with only the Seiko wordmark at 12, along with the GMT and automatic at six. This being a Seiko cast in the SKX mold, the loom on the dial and hands is exceptional, keeping up with virtually anything else out there. And again, like the SKX, the SSK collection serves up a pleasing wearing experience updated with a redesigned Jubilee style bracelet. On the wrist, the watch showcases a 42.5 millimeter diameter, a 46 millimeter lug to lug, and a 13.6 millimeter case wearing smaller than the proposed diameter in practice, feeling closer to a typical 40 to 40 and a half millimeter case. These SSKs lean into a Jubilee style bracelet anchored to the watch at 22 millimeter drilled lugs. And although it's not exceptional, it is a nice step forward from the jangly creation that was paired with the retired SKX, here showcasing solid end links and pin adjusted bracelet links paired with a folding clasp equipped with four points of micro adjustment within. For the price point, it would be fair to call this bracelet just okay compared to the competitors but I do like the finer link bracelet design and its ability to complement the sporty nature of the rest of the watch. Case finishing is in line with what you'll see from the rest of the modern Seiko 5 models with a circular grain brushed case top and polished case sides. The crown at four is push pull, still good enough for 100 meters of water resistance. And like the case, the bracelet pairs the brushed and polished elements in a way that remains utilitarian in its overall feel, but offers a hint of additional dressy flair and versatility. Providing the strongest nod to Rolex here is the bezel. Here offered in a bi-directional friction fit style you'll seldom see from Seiko. Although it doesn't personally bother me, I have seen many enthusiasts that have jumped all over this aspect and can understand given the typical audible operation from their prospects divers. Set within, a mineral crystal is executed in a bicolor format, coordinated to match each dial variant, offering a not so different look at a distance to ceramic, but in this case will also be easier to scratch. This continues with the flat mineral crystal on top with the Cyclops casting over the front of the watch. So now let's jump into some conclusions here, some final considerations as you're looking at these watches. And just for myself also, just to say that I really love these watches, I'm gonna get one of these and add one to my collection without question. So let's talk about some of the cons associated here, because it's not a perfect watch, but it is a very damn good one. Now, one thing that people are going to bring up, like I mentioned, is the bezel action. It has more of a friction fit type of effect. Doesn't bother me necessarily, but I can understand people wanting that more, just snappier feel in uh, response that typically comes from Prospects Divers and even Seiko 5 watches. The bracelet is not bad, a great step forward, but I would say still potentially is more mediocre compared to some of the competition, but absolutely does the job. And I do like how it looks in pairing with the GMT nature of the watch. And then the final point I'll mention here is going to be the mineral just crystal that is going to be used uh, on the watch. Now, this is not something that I think you can expect from a Seiko 5 to jump up to Sapphire. This is not the norm, uh, but as you're getting closer to $500, that is something that Seiko will start to dabble with more. I just bring that up because I think some people might be reluctant when looking at the mineral glass. But now let's talk about the pros. I think this one speaks for itself. You have to understand what the attainable GMT market has been for quite some time. It's been dominated by quartz watches under $500. There really haven't been many brands that have even thrown their hat into the ring. And what could you really use from a mechanical GMT movement up until the last, say, 12 to 18 months? 
specifically really the last 12 months as Miyota started to roll out some more uh, entry-level GMT calibers, especially true GMTs. And then under $500, it was even more selective. So seeing this new movement is absolutely game-changing, not only for Seiko, but for the entire market. But this is the flagship product that was able to showcase it. And I think they did a really good job with the design. It does going to emulate some you know, inspired elements, but a big part of that is going to be coming from the SKX. All the dial colors, in my opinion, look great. I think they all have their own charm and personality. 100 meters of water resistance. Insert, again, like I mentioned, does look good. It looks the part with without question from across the room. If you are looking at it, you might be fooled and thinking that it is ceramic. You get closer, you realize what it is, but does have this kind of slight sheen to it, which is nice. Wearability is also good. This one wears, I'd say similar to a 40 millimeter wash. And if you're talking about appealing the most amount of people out there, 40 millimeters is a pretty safe bet. So all in all, what do I think of these watches? I think they're fantastic. And I think they're new staples in the entry point market under $500 if you want a mechanical watch, for one, that can just kind of do it all. But if you want one with the GMT, I don't think there currently exists a better option for you uh, in the modern watch market. It's absolutely a knockout, slam dunk, home run for Seiko, and a watch I'll certainly be adding to my collection as well. But all right, guys, that is my video looking at these new Seiko 5 GMTs. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That all helps out the content. Also, if you're a personal owner of one of these watches, feel free to leave a comment down below. I also would really just encourage it just because I think other people that are looking to make a buying decision like to hear from other owners out there. So would appreciate that as well. Definitely check out teddyballdesire.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. We also are an authorized dealer of Seiko. So if you do want to check out these GMTs or some other watches that were hand curated by myself, you can check it out in the link in the description down below. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.